union address. These are, these are individuals that even if you don't go to the far right of your right, this is the individual who's supposed to be to the middle of your right, who you guys picked. Why should he be to and the middle? Is, Barack Obama responded to a president. Let's, 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 I mean, I don't, don't want to argue semantics. Let me just get the. the, okay. let me get the this is the individual who became the face of your party, just like Bobby Jindal did when, when he came on. And he, in April, declared a Confederate History Month. So at the very minimum, if you don't want to take it away from the birthers or the, te the Tea Party activists, the Republican Party, the Central Republican Party, which Bob McDonald, I believe, is a part of, how how did you address that component? I mean, the Confederates it. are part of Virginia's history. They're allowed I, I don't, to. I don't, I don't have any problems I, with that. All right. Well, you don't I have mean, any problems with the fact that it's part of it's a I Confederate. Won't celebrate are we going to pretend it never they're happened? They're not celebrating are we going to slavery. We're not going to pretend. I'm just saying, but there are racial but connotations. But they're not. They're not don't, but don't, that's not what they're celebrating. Like, okay. you have to be careful when you start trampling. I am a strong supporter of freedom of speech, even if it's what I don't want to hear, okay? And the same way there are members, in the, there are people in this country that don't think Martin Luther King was a great civil rights leader. They don't like him. They don't like what he stood for. They don't think Martin Luther King should have a holiday. That's their right. Not for, it's their per yeah, John. That's their right. I mean, I, b I believe in freedom of speech, but I think as a society, we should also draw lines. And this is a government. Let, let me, James. Let me address this. Let me address this. To, this is not an individual. Shakira just said that this is an individual choice, basically, of a person choosing to accept uh, an individual or an ideology and following that ideology. But this is a state elected individual who has tremendous legislative power, who is forcing basically the residents of Virginia, the Republican, a non-Republican, or Pro African American or pro Latino individuals to, to do follow what? this competitive they history. They don't have to if do the anything. If, they if they the state is, if, if your governor is if, mandated, if this is mandated, it's mandated, 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 basically it's mandated, 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 mandated that the most. There is Democratic run Southern states that fly the Confederate flag. I've never heard of anyone having a holiday forced on them that they didn't No. I haven't heard of that. It's not an official holiday. Just like, you know, there's Women History Month, there's Latino History Month. Who's celebrating? Okay, so there, I mean, there for you to be, uh, for you to be a state, if you black people be... live there and do very well there. Very well, very well. So, Alabama. Why is this an All issue right. now when one state that has a history entrenched in Confederate, uh, in uh, Confederatism, why can't they, why can't they historically remember it? It was there. We can't pretend that the eight, the period from between 1800 and 1900 never happened. We can't pretend that Dred Scott never happened. We can't pretend that the Kansas-Nebraska Act never happened. So why should we pretend this never happened? Well, I just wanted to see, but I just wanted to make sure we address the fact that even though these, you're making valid points, it's your party, I don't think that these things either hold any sort of increasing of recruitment going forward for minorities. I, I personally don't see where a well, person of we don't play identity, identity politics. We're well, not going to target recruit. minority groups and no. say, okay, no to recruit. black guys over there, this is what we can offer you. <laughs> Latinos yeah, over here, that. this is what we can offer That's That's not how the, the Republican right. Party works. Okay. Well, and that's not how conservatism, those are not the principles conservatism is built on. We're going to conclude that, sub that subject right there. Thanks so much for joining us, and please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Across the Hour. We give you politics from a different point of view. Once again, my name is Saquon Jones, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, John Minza and James Davidman, and today's special guest, Shakira Jones. Now, I want to sort of get away from the political aspect and, join, and, and sort of address a social issue regarding black relationships. Now, I don't want to get into why successful black women don't have men. I think that, you know, relationships are tough enough regardless if you're successful or unsuccessful. But I want to sort of uh, throw this question out to you, John, and the fact that so many of individuals of my generation have grown up with single parents in their household. Not to say that that's happened everywhere, but you have male and females of minorities, families who are growing up with one person in the household. When, so when they see that one person, whether it be the mom or the dad, struggling and succeeding and doing well, and then they go into college and get an education and become successful, subconsciously, it becomes to feel like they can do it the same way their parent has done it. And I wanted to sort of address if you think that there's a downside to independence, that independence that it took for your single parent or, or that single parent to be successful has now made minorities feel like they don't need to have a nuclear family, whereas two, as a male and female in the household, both raising a child because they grew up in a, in a, in a, in a society or, or in a household where they just didn't have that. Um, I think there definitely is a downside to that. Um, 
today's generation isn't like it was maybe in our parents or their parents generation where they were getting uh, married at a younger age um, today obviously we are all products of our environments products of our upbringing so if let's say one did grow up in a one parent household and see and saw that that was you know worked that it worked mm -hmm. then you know we probably would try and follow their footsteps our yeah. single parents footsteps um, and probably be less open to advances from someone to try and form a relationship because we feel that we just don't need them in order to go through life. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, there definitely is a downside to that. I'll let you address that too, Shakira, but uh, I also want you to sort of get a two-part component. Um, let's parallel it to our economic situation with so many of us, so many not of us, uh, of, of Americans in a whole or, or world residents have lost their job because of the current economic situation. Um, and some of us, a lot of us, have been forced to either make, you know, adjustments to how we look for a job, what types of job we access, I mean, we accept, and uh, we make adjustments based off the environment. As a successful black African-American woman, do you think that minority females should be sort of doing the same thing when it comes to the individuals that they date? Should there be some sort of, not necessarily settling, settling of the, the requirements that you have in a mate, but the sort of the same way you, you look for a job now? Um, I think that's a great point. I mean, I come from the perspective, my parents have been married for over 25 years. So I grew up in a household seeing uh, a two family dynamic. Um, and so that's always been what I've aspired for. Even though my mother is a very independent woman, she can take care of herself at any time. I, and I can too. I've always grown up looking for that cohesive unit. But among my friends that have grown up in single family home, I think you're absolutely spot on. They've grown up seeing these strong women or strong men that have done it by themselves. And that's not what they're looking for, but they're more apt to accept that if they don't meet someone, it's fine. I can do it alone. So um, that's definitely spilled into our society. As far as women changing their um, criteria for dating, I mean, my mother is white collar, my father's blue collar. I think it all depends on what you're looking for. Among statured or affluent or successful black women, I mean, you've done it for yourself. You have your own money, that's fine. You want someone that compliments you. If I'm gonna date somebody, I don't really care what their career is. If they have a job and they're bringing something to the table and they're giving me what I'm looking for. So you're a blue collar Home Depot worker, that's what you're- that's Not what a problem, you're, they not have a, a job, nope. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh. So, I, I mean, I think that where the problem starts coming in is, is in your social circles. The higher up you get as a black woman, you become scrutinized more. So when you're showing up at that corporate function, it, there is, I think, a stigma attached to having a guy that's not corporate or that's not white collar or whatever. But then you have to be comfortable within yourself. If that's the man that you love and he's respectable and he's presentable, then if anyone else has an issue with them, that's their issue. Well, James, if the Republicans had their way and they abolished abortion, do you feel like that probably that statistic will be a lot less, a lot more, uh, if the, the Republicans get their way in terms of abolishing or or, or having <laughs> not the right, not having the right to choose for women? Uh, wow, it's a pretty loaded question there. Uh, I'm not sure if abolishing abortion would reduce the rate of single parent households in the black community because. By the same token, we have plenty of government programs that have incentivized black communities to continue having children. What do you mean by that? Uh, welfare benefits, uh, temporary assistance for needy families, Section 8, food stamps, the war against poverty. I mean, these have decimated black communities. You go into Detroit today, you go into South Central LA, you go into parts of Brooklyn, uh, there are no men in the household at all. And it's because throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s, women were told the only way you can qualify for these benefits is to be single. That means marriage proposals were off the table, marriages were out of the question, and the amount of money they were being paid, in some cases, were better than lower class wages, so why shouldn't they sit there and have children out of wedlock and... and, and James, you, you make it seem like that welfare or the state of welfare 
was in the height of institution while Ronald Reagan, who was a Republican or the champion of the Republican Party, was in office. Oh, he had a Democratic Congress, so they, they were spending out of control anyway. They, I mean, he and had it a all started with Congress, LBJ. but he still got everything that he wanted. Lyndon B. I mean, Johnson was the guy who introduced all of these big budget, big government, budget busting entitlement programs that decimated black community over the years. Well, before we get Reagan, back, pretty much inherited. But you still think that's going on today, though? Do you think well, that today we're dealing with the after effects. You know, now we've had feminism, we've had economic collapse, we 